the border and all the issues that it raises. We're going to be talking about that today on Real Live Talk. Hi, I'm Pastor Jack Hibbs, and I am part of the Evangelical for Trump movement that is, of course, open and available to anyone of you to join. You can go to the website. You can get uh, up to date information on what's going on regarding the evangelicals involvement and the dynamic of promoting a biblical worldview. And I'm also blessed to be part of the faith initiative team uh, regarding uh, President Trump. Uh, what I want to bring to you today, and I pray there would be something that would bring comfort to you, is something that I'm, that's near and dear to my heart for several reasons. Number one, I was born in San Diego. Uh, we would, it was not uncommon for us to go uh, and visit Tijuana on a regular basis uh, for fun, for shopping, for bullfighting. When I lived in San Diego, my dad was a big fan of all that, and we had a great time. So Mexico, San Diego, so born and raised Southern Californian, the border, I, I get that. Uh, the other thing is this, that the God of the Bible says that he is the one, both in the book of Daniel and in the book of Acts, that has established the borders of nations and has placed those citizens within the boundaries of those nations. In other words, God is a God of borders. And today, the topic of border and border enforcement and border control is a big deal, a big uh, political talking point. And I want you to know that, uh, first of all, you should know that I'm not being paid to say what I'm about to say. I get nothing out of what I'm about to say. Just the satisfaction of telling you the truth so that you might be able to pass it on. So having said that, uh, coming up now to 2020, I made a, a call to Washington, D.C. as a Southern California pastor. And I happen to pastor a large church. And I know that there are people in our church, I've met them, I know them, who are not here legally. They're here illegally. And they're scared. And so I reached out and I asked this question. Can I take a tour of the border, the border facilities, and can I bring other pastors with me so that we can see what is really going on down there and we can tell other people about it? And that request was granted. And so a couple of weeks ago, we spent well over six hours in uh, uh, vehicles going along the border. We went into the processing facilities. We went uh, to the border crossing area at San Ysidro. And we talked to, all day long, we had with us two representatives from each of the three uh, authorities. We had Department of Homeland Security. We had California Border Control. And we had ICE, uh, that is immigration, uh, customs enforcement. And so they were our hosts for that day. And we got to see everything. And the first thing that I and the other pastors were surprised about was the incredible level. I was blown away with the level of professionalism on our side. Professionalism, highly educated uh, border agents, and what was also very beautiful was the cleanliness of the entire process. Friends, I promise you, the process at San Ysidro, the standing in line and getting your papers looked at and speaking to a border agent was no different, no different in carpet, no different in wall color, no different in paint than going through customs at LAX, at Los Angeles International Airport, same. I could have taken a picture, wasn't allowed, but I could have taken a picture, you would have thought I was coming back into the country, into Los Angeles. Having said that, we, got a ch we had a chance to ask questions. We had a, we had a chance to go through uh, and examine the fence and the wall and all of this stuff that you hear about. Can I tell you something? We didn't see one cage. We didn't see families separated for the reasons you think. Did you know that the images that you see on YouTube and on the web of kids in cages. Did you know that came from the George Bush and Barack Obama era? Did you know that Trump had those cages uh, done, taken away with? Did you know that the facilities at San Ysidro, which is the largest border crossing in the world, 
I didn't know that. More people cross the border in and out of California, US, Mexico, to vacation, do business, uh, trucks, uh, workers, day pass, uh, all of that, more crossing in 24 hours than any other spot on earth. The enhancement to technology, uh, what the agents needed regarding uh, process equipment, arms, their, their weaponry that they need. Did you know that because the wall, I'll just call it the wall, in California it's not actually a wall, it's a fence. Uh, it's a formidable fence, it's a 30 foot high fence, it's a double fence. One part of the fence is about uh, 50 yards away from the second part of the fence, so the, there's a no man's land in between. But um, anyway, we'll just call it the wall for now. Did you know, I was shocked to find out, that in Mexico City, for example, the kidnapped capital of the world, did you know that there are more children kidnapped in Mexico City than any other place in the world? 30, 40 miles out in Mexico from the border of the US and Mexico? Did you know that kidnappings have dramatically dropped of little kids? Do you wanna know what we learned? We learned, for example, because you can't sneak through anymore because it's been shut down, it's forcing everybody to go through the legal border crossings, that drug cartel, sex trafficking cartel, human trafficking cartel have been forced now to rethink their plan and they can't go through the rickety old fence that was there before. Now they're being forced to go through regular channels like you and I would have to go through. And did you know that they were taking some families, for example, hostage on the highway and using their vehicle and their families to get across, to get drugs, to get people across the border. And when you go and look at the decrease of illegal activity at the borders, did you know it's all true according to these agents? We saw with our eyes. Did you know that what has stopped previously where kidnappings would take place and these cartels would kill these little children and remove their insides and stuff them with coke and meth and marijuana and everything else? stitch the kid back up, put clothes on him, put a little LA Dodger ball cap on the kid, stop a car on the highway that they assume is heading to America, put that kid in the back seat of the car and said, you'll go through customs with this kid. This is your kid, name him whatever you want. And when you get through into the US, we'll, uh, we'll recontact you. You know, listen, that's sick, that's insane. And yet we were told that that kind of stuff has now stopped, that had been going on for decades. Borders, strong borders. There are so many people arguing against the border issue. I'm here to tell you, nobody's being mistreated. You say, yeah, but I've heard about families being separated. Oh, no, 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 let me correct you. This is what you heard, okay? You heard moms and dads being separated from children. That's what you heard. You didn't hear the reason why. I know the reason why now, we saw it. When a, mom and a, when a mom and a dad have a kid and they're crossing the border and they ask for their documentation, if they have no documentation, they take the man over here, they take the woman over there and they take the little kid over here and then they begin to ask, what's your name? My name's Juan. What's your wife's name? Susie. At the same time, they're asking Susie what her husband's name is. And while they're doing that, they're trying to find out if the kid's young enough or if old enough, what's your mommy and daddy's name? Is that your mommy and daddy? Because there's no documentation, they're trying to find out, is this smuggling? Is this human trafficking? What's happening? And when the names don't match, the child is put into federal child protection care and the two adults are put in confinement or I should say they're sequestered to find out what's really going on. When was the last time you heard that? All you heard was that families were being separated at the border. And this is pretty cool. Under President Trump's leadership, they've issued DNA kits and the parent is being swabbed and the mom and the kid 
and they're testing like they do on the battlefield. These are battlefield uh, capability DNA tests, and they find out this kid is not related to them at all whatsoever. What's going on here? Good things are happening at the border. You need to know that. Good news is happening. If you know any border control agents, you ought to stop them and ask them. Ask them if their job is more respected in these last three, four years. Ask them if they have now the gear that they need, the technology that they need. Ask them if mischief and nefarious activity has dropped in the last three years. Ask them. I did. I drove down to San Diego and spent a day doing exactly that. So I want you to spread the news. And I want you to, listen, I want you to, pastor, I want you to speak to your people about this, because this is truth. Until you do, your flock are gonna keep hearing the lie. The truth's gotta come from you. You're the authority in their life as the shepherd of their soul to protect them. Preach a sermon on truth. Find out more and let them hear it. And by the way, every day of the year, it's completely legal in all 50 states. You can have voter registration tables at your church, and you can encourage your people to vote for pro-life, pro-borders, pro-religious freedoms, pro-military, by voting for President Trump. If you can't go that far, you can simply do this. Look at the two platforms. One's Republican, one's Democrat. Which one's pro-life? Which one's pro-America? Which one is pro-military, and you'll know how to vote. I hope this makes some sense to you. It's time for all of us to take a deep breath and fill our lungs with air. And for us as pastors, hallelujah, this is our moment to speak truth. We can all become prophets in our community for righteousness. God bless you, and let's pray regarding this upcoming election. <music>